got a bunch of slides, a bunch of pictures of what we do. I think it'll help visualize um, how it works. Um, these two guys. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to show that these kids that we're going to work some. All right, it's not, I mean, I love to play games, but I want, they also have to learn how to work and they gotta learn how to work when they don't want to. And so we, we stress that, we always stress that consistency. Workout Wednesdays, uh, you know, maybe Fitness Fridays, whatever it is. We stress that consistency. Uh, these guys are, are trying to do some planks. I, I, I think I made them, you stay up until I take this picture. <laughs> Because they're, they're like, that's, that's enough, coach. <laughs> um, no, it's not. There we go. I got it. When we do have our workouts, it's usually, uh, it's, it's usually stations. It's not all the time. But with our general classes, and we have three different kinds of classes in our, in our in our school, um, we have regular phys ed, we have rec phys ed, recreational phys ed, and we have advanced phys ed. Uh, we're very fortunate. Some of these kids have three phys ed classes every day. It's amazing. Every, like, we're talking, and they're all 15 minutes. You guys do the math. But, you know, that's a lot. Um, so with our regular phys ed, we usually we do stations a lot. Um, this one, you can see, if you've ever seen, this is a, a slack rack here. Um, we're using it for uh, push-ups, little advanced push-ups. Uh, we try, I try to change the the uh, the exercise every every time, um, and then come back to it once they they know how to do it correctly. This is our advanced class, and I generally got one picture of them. Um, this is an elective that we do. Um, they go in knowing that they are going to get it every day. That they're going to work really hard, and they come out of there driven. They are. They work hard. This particular day, um, didn't get the picture right. Over there, we're beaming uh, P90X on the on the on the wall, and uh, so they're not too happy right now. <laughs> but they are. They're they're having a good time. They all work hard. It's usually, it's pretty much our 25 best athletes as well. Um, so the advanced class is awesome. I hope um, when you get into a school that you have something like this, because not only do these guys do, I mean, it's like your your dream class. If you can, they'll work hard for you. And we can also experiment with different games. And they'll know, they'll be able to tweak it and be like, now nah, we got to do this, coach, or we got to change this up, or we got to change this role. <clears throat> Let's see what we got next. Um, this was kind of this was last year. This is a seventh grade class. It was more of a regular, regular phys ed uh, stations. I have um, jump ropes, stationary, or stability balls, with medicine balls in the background. They're seeing how many times they can shoot. What I usually do in these classes is I have I like to have music. I think you, you got to have music for this stuff. They're just, they're not gonna, they're not gonna dig it. Um, but I have this app, it's called I Workout Muse Pro. And I got it like five years ago. And I haven't found another one that's better. It's intervals, you know, length of time, um, everything like that. You've heard that before? It's, it's perfect. Um, I don't know, there's probably updates, but it's great for me. It tells you, it tells the kids when to change. Uh, their stations, um, tells them when they're halfway through that station, and uh, it's just a, it's a great, great app to have. We just took up an iPad to speakers, last um, I try to get more uh, rock and heavy metal on, the kids get more stuff I don't like so much, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I make them, that's like, you gotta like Metallica, because <laughs> <laughs> um, they you can see uh, uh, <laughs> we found them the other day. It's awesome. That was so good. My, I always mess this up. Oh,
No, it's perfect. I wanted the rubber, but I wanted. To, I also needed to figure out how am I going to use one rower in class, right? And this worked out so good, and it's, it's super easy. Um, we have uh, six stations set up, and I like to take the kids around all all of them twice. It ends up being about a, a 12 minute workout, 40 seconds a, a station that they switch. Um, so what I did was I took and I separate the girls. And the boys. And I'm telling you, with that kind of thing, it works. The girls work harder, and the boys work harder. The boys aren't showing off, and the girls aren't embarrassed, you know? So it just works. Um, but I gave randomly, well, they, I, I let them volunteer. It's like, all right, I want 12, 12 of my best rowers to raise their hands, and they, you know, and I count them off, and then, and then an anchor that will go just a little bit longer, about 20 seconds. Before. So this is what you're looking at. This is the anchor. Um, they finished their workout, and I like blew the whistle. I was like, "Girls, come down here!" Because they're about to set a record, right? And they are just they're they're blasting that rower. Now um, we did that um, the whole first term, but we did that for a month. We did a, a four we did four workouts, and uh, what I did was I saved every. Um, total how many meters they rode for for every session right and uh, so we did a little cross curricular with this and this is what all this cool stuff is though um, I just saved all the data this is so easy I gave um, our seventh grade this is eighth grade I gave our seventh grade math department the numbers right and I was like all right kids what can, what can you do with this so I want you to I was so overwhelmed when, when they gave me all this stuff. They took the whole week and they made, this is our, this are our results from different periods. I have five periods that I do this a day. So I think each math class did one of the periods and they did it from you know, like percent change week to week, um, just total distance week to week, uh, difference between I don't know. I think it's always it's always against boys and girls. I just said you just you figure something out. See see what the what the what's the results look like. And I, I thought they did an awesome job. Um, I mean, if you want to look at it better uh, later, we have what they did, the original data, and all their homework. Now this has not been checked yet, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if I gotta give it back or not. But they did do the work. They did it. And I think it was really cool. I did not expect them to go that to go that distance. But that was an easy cross curricular thing. Um, it was easy for me to I just gave them the data. I kept it. And it was easy for the math the math department was like, we need something for, for the week before break, you know, so they were happy to have it. So it's you just got, and there's all kinds of numbers you can give a, you know, a math department for anything. I mean, all, everything we do is, can be recorded, can be uh, used for data. So I was, I've been really happy. I won't, I hope you check these out a little bit. Uh, that's my dog. That's BJ. She's playing her favorite thing in the world, uh, disc golf. Happens to be mine too. It might be a coincidence. Um, what I'm, we'll talk about disc golf for a little bit. Uh, it's a niche sport. How many, does anyone play? 
Sean so Bolger, are you good at this game? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not better at it than I am regular golf. Golf. So <laughs> I, I totally gave up on regular golf. This time. Um, my favorite thing to do, and before the grade, it was my first thing that I kind of did that was a different thing. Um, it was about five, uh, I'd say about five years ago, and the kids were like, nah, what is this? If they don't see it on Sports Center, if, it's the, the, if there's not a shoe named after the player, they're, they're not, they're like, nah, we're not doing this. But I think, though, that um, they started to see it on Sports Center. They started to see it on the, on the um, top 10 plays, you know, big drives and, and, and aces and things like that. Uh, they heard it from me all the time. I'm like, God, we just go play this spot. It's going to be great. Um, yeah, the first year, couldn't have, couldn't have them do it for two days. And I'll show you what, what we've done so far. Um, it's just a Um, four-time world champion uh, putter, and I think he's also a world champion overall. Uh, his, his wife Des is a women's world champion. Got to know them over the years because of conferences that I've went to. So I, I, I want you to, to go to these things. He's hooking me up with. Um, I mean, I've got to buy him, but a pretty good deal on a, on a course. I'm going to build a course at my at my school, and just talked uh, this week. Uh, actually, yesterday he gave me the, um, you know, what the totals will be for for different. Uh, I, I want to leave there a six or a nine hole. I'm not sure yet, but um, good guy and uh, pretty good at the golf. And there's a picture of one of his sessions. I, I believe that was, I don't know, St. Louis. It was either St. Louis or Seattle. I can't remember. But he's always at those things, and, and he loves he loves to teach the game. Original Frisbee. Did you know there was such a thing? That's an original Frisbee Bakery tin. Um, I've got to sell that at the, at the Glade uh, conference uh, just this past month. So here we are. Um, this fall, this fall's been so good. The weather's been awesome. So we've been going outside a lot and we've been a little more free to just explore or our uh, property that we have, which is a lot of, you know, kind of, we got some woods, we got a lot of, uh, of rolling hills on our, on our school property. But we're, we're developing these baskets, or these, these holes through the, through the woods. Um, so the kids showed, found this one, and I just went up there, and, and my co-teacher took the picture there. But, so we're looking at this line, and I'm buying this one. We're, we're going to use this as a hole. They, they did a great job. But, so I'm looking at the line, kind of thinking where you should shoot at. And uh, I'm sure that was a great shot. <laughs> and then the kids, you know, the kids are trying. They might have went for me, I'm not sure. But, um, but yeah, they, they, they found it. Um, we started to clear it a little bit this past week. And uh, hopefully we got some more, uh, some more nice weather to be able to do that a little bit more. This is from the other side of it. They have been so cool. We've been clearing uh, branches out of the woods. Um, we've been looking at different lines and different hole configurations to see how, how can we make a, a six or a nine hole uh, course with what we have, which is, which is uh, I think, more than a lot of people do. But they're, they're just, 
they're being so cool about it. I'm just kind of letting them go and doing it. And I'm like, these are my guys. If you just do what you're supposed to do, um, it's all screwed up. And we're going to do this for a while. It's going to be cool. I mean, the, the, the process is slow, but, but it's happening. It doesn't happen, have to happen next week. I can't I snap this picture. These guys are, I, you, know, you know, before, they've been doing this for two years. But uh, they, I showed them different putting drills in the past, and here they are doing it on their own. I'm, I'm up here doing something else, and, and I see them laying the discs down, and they're putting, they're standing back, and they're putting that one. This is our drone. So, I don't have a drone, it's not mine. <laughs> but it's really cool. Our tech, our tech ed department has this drone. It's capable of, I don't know, it's got like a three mile range. It's got uh, a big old display, HD display, and it can take pictures and video. And uh, what we want to do, once we build this course, another cross curve. First, I want to, I'm taking tech ed and using that to take overhead pictures of the different holes. We'll uh, print out the pictures and give it to the art class. And I'm going to have them design it however, whatever medium that they want. And I'll just pick, I don't know, the six best ones that I like for T for, for size. And instead of buying, you know, just ready made ones. I think it'll, I hope it'll, I hope it'll work. I think it's worth it. We were trying, I think, has anyone ever drove a, a drone like that? <laughs> Things fly. I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world. I was trying to throw uh, the other day, and he was going to try to follow it, and we thought we'd be cool with it. It didn't work out <laughs> at all. But we'll try again, because that's just fun. And the reason that, I, one of the reasons I brought, introduced it, is because we have this in our community. Um, this is the Greenbrier State Forest. This is the top of our of our golf course. I, I mean, that's beautiful. You can't hear anything. You'll see any uh, telephone poles or anything out there. It's just I'm out there a lot. So that so know what you have in your area, so you can promote it in your program as well. What I'm getting at. So we have a. I'm just saying, and I'm also with this golf, I'll finish with this. They're not going to buy everything that you give them at once, especially, it depends on the grade. Sixth grade, yes, yeah, seventh grade, no. Eighth grade, if you sold it to them before. <laughs> but, uh, but they will, if you just keep keep at it. They won't, they won't. It took me five years to get into like that sport. Tennis is another thing. That's a traditional sport, but they're like, uh, I don't think tennis. No, I don't know. And I couldn't, I couldn't get them to, to like it either. But I did this year, and I think that no, I think the difference was going outside. I never. The high school has these tennis courts. They don't use them except for tennis season. So he's like, you know what? We're just going to walk down there, and if someone yells at us. They'll yell at us, but no one has. So. We just went and uh, kind of used their tennis courts, and they loved it. They absolutely loved it. This is kind of, we were in the process of playing games, and so after the games were all played, and still use kind of a, a sport ed uh, model for all this, um, so I posted the, the championships after the, after the playoffs and everything, right? Put them on the walls and stuff so, that, so they could see kind of build it up for a couple of days. And um, so here's some of the championship games. Pretty much all my pictures are culminating events, um, just because that's the chance that I can I can do that, because I have different people doing different things. Uh, we have a doubles match. You can see I got students here being uh, line judges and things like that. Some, some more examples. Just, they, they really had a good time. And then at the end, then I posted the, the winners, you know, all around school. Just so that everybody could see who the champions were. And some of them are, are kids 
they, they're not. Chess is one of those games that kind of levels the playing field. Even though probably the best athletes are probably going to win, but not in this case. We had several that, uh, that did find success in this that they wouldn't in other sports. So it was pretty cool to see it a little better there. You might have an intramural program in your school. We don't anymore. But I'm, I'm kind of glad the way our system is now. It's a, it's a much better program. But some people might have intramurals after lunch. You might have, a, a, I don't know, a, a period that's just for that. I don't know. Depends on the school. Depends on the principal. I use sport ed um, for every intramural thing I do. And it just, it's easy. It makes sense. It's the easiest way to do it. This is our speed balls. Anyone know what speed ball is? Because I hadn't heard of speed ball until I went into the public schools. And I don't know why. We should have a speed ball class. <laughs> I like it. We, we, it's just a, it's a hybrid game of ultimate soccer, basketball, football. Um, tweak the rules every year. But uh, this is a, a speed ball championship. We're using the scoreboard. I have coaches. Um, that the principal's in there, because I always tell when, when we're having a championship game, I'm like, I want the, you know, the faculty to come in. It's going to be an event. And I tell you, these, these days, especially the speedball championship, I don't get, I get more fired up for these as much as I do with a football, a football game like that I really do. I'm coming out of there just having a good time. I think they need to. Yeah. Ah. Oh, here we go. Just make sure that mass is on the left, on the right screen. Oh, what is it? Because I'm not. Maybe that's what it was. Students having different roles. Um, coach, I don't know, probably assistant coach, so I wanted to be head coach. <laughs> this is, uh, I know this is the beginning. They're, they're coming into the championship game. I don't know what he has. He's got some kind of sign that they're, they're used to parade now, um, whatever their name is, I guess. Using the students as a scoreboard operator. He wants to hit the horn, I'm sure, really, really bad, <laughs> and he does. Um, always advertise what's your, uh, what's going on. Just kind of put a little flavor into it. We usually have, we got some hype music going on, you know, as they're coming in, that kind of thing. Um, you can see this coach. He's always throwing his, he's throwing his clipboard down already. He's he's having a fit. He doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> I think this is probably in the playoffs at this point. I wanted halfway through every season, I wanted them to kind of have some kind of plays or something. And speedball is kind of a freestyle game, but I wanted like, I was like, give me three go-to plays that you're gonna, that you're gonna score. So that's what they're doing right there. I'm trying to figure those out. I always have the brackets up. The speedball championship is a 20 team Double Elimination Championship. Can you imagine being in the seventh grade? How important that is to win the championship. It is. It's important. It's a big deal. Let's look how much fun there. And always take a picture of the championship team. Right. We'll talk a little bit about going to conferences. I have, who's went to a conference before yet? Just a couple of us. Uh, I think you should. Um, so many things that, that you can learn about. I learned about a new sport that I was really excited about. It's called Ken Ball. This past uh, one at the Glade. 
uh, presented at this uh, at said, platform. Just a great, and you get to see to see things like that, Seattle, out on the docks. Beautiful, awesome, awesome town. Go to college if you get the opportunity. You're, when you get to a school, your principal will most likely, if you ask them, they will pay for your registration. They'll probably even pay for your, in your county, they'll probably pay for your travel, at least in our situation. I don't, I don't imagine it would be for most others. So take advantage of this. There's any kind of thing like that you can do. If you're a phys ed teacher, you're also probably going to um, be expected to coach, but you'll certainly be asked. I know I came in uh, being a, I was a football coach, and they wanted me to be a football coach, and then within two weeks, there was like, what do you know about wrestling? Uh, we need a baseball season. You know, you're probably going to get asked a lot of, about a lot of different things. Um, if you, I, for me, the football team was incredibly rewarding. Um, also, a case of track team as well. Um, and uh, and train my football players during that track as well. We do really, we have a really good program. Um, here we are uh, halfway to Jefferson County, actually. We're in Virginia somewhere, I can't remember. We're having a walk through, stretching our legs halfway through. Took the kids to uh, the Saints facility. We, the, the New Orleans Saints, um, have their training camp in our community uh, for I don't know three. I think they're there for about three weeks. And once, once a, once a, a season, we take them and we have practice. Um, we have practice there one day. So the kids get to check that out. They look at the at the uh, locker room. There's not a whole lot to look at, but the boys found Breeze and McCown's number, which coincides with theirs, and they were pretty happy, but that guy. My future, my future lineman, he's my, he's my water bottle. He's awesome. Just checking out the weights. They have an amazing weight room in there, as you can imagine. Um, this was from lap the year before. Uh, so we get to practice on, the, on their turf. Um, Kids love to try to kick it in the NFL field, but they're not very good at it. And we ended up being eight and zero this year, second time in school history. We were seven and one last year. Um, since I've been there, we've we've won over seventy five percent of our games. Pretty proud about that. We work with them from March to Halloween every year, um, and it keeps keeps them out of trouble. Keeps me out of trouble. Now this fall, um, our, our school has changed uh, how we've done phys ed. Um, we, we have, I have the same kids, I have all eighth grade, all year, uh, one term of phys ed, the term two is health, term three is phys ed, term four is health. Two terms of health is a lot for me. It's just a, and it's, a, it's way too much for the kids, I think, my opinion. So our principal said, you know what, if it's nice out, go outside. We don't have access to the gym because the other grades are doing it at the gym. Um, so we've done a lot outside and just basically every game that we teach during phys ed, and these, these guys have done this for, you know, this is the third year. Um, we just take it outside and we do with play. So we're doing shoot ball. You guys play shoot ball a little bit. You so, it's hard, I'm starting to sell it too. I, they just, they gotta get the concept. Um, but they're getting it. And I don't think they like it. They like to slam the ball. Uh, we have a, um, a half mile loop trail uh, through the woods at our school. And we utilize it a lot. I've been having, I've been having the kids walk it um, almost every day. Um, kind of selfishly, I'm trying to I want them to stamp it down and pack it down and remove the leaves and everything. Um, but they also get a lot of fresh air and they get to get to be outside and, and hike. Uh, so we can ride bikes on it. Um, so it's starting to get nice and packed and just a, it's just a nice uh, nice half mile trail to, for the mountain bikes. 
And don't worry about the kids like running off. It is a half mile. They'll have Greenbrier on both sides of it. There's no way anybody's going anywhere. So <laughs> no, nobody has escaped the, the trail so far. I haven't been worried about it. I had to make uh, my my co-teacher, uh, Drew, said they're having a maintenance day today. That's what that is. Um, every three weeks or so, we got to teach them how to change the tires, um, pump them up, check the brakes, wash them up. We're good looking bikes. We have cannon delts, and um, if they find a way to break them, I'm telling you, I don't know how the kids do it, but they find a way to break them. I figured this thing, we gotta make, make, maintain them. Luckily, Drew is a triathlete, so he does a thing or two about bikes. Now, one day during the trail, and this is Savannah and I, and her daughter Haley, we were, I was telling them about what we've been doing, and so Haley wanted to walk on the trail, and we started picking up trash. This was like a day or two after Halloween. And I was like, holy cow, I'm getting a, a cracker bag. And I started picking up trash. I had a whole thing of trash. So I was like, uh, Cochran, my, my co-teacher, we're, we're going to have an emergency pollution lesson tomorrow. So we did. Told them, you know, what happens when this trash, was it just going to disappear? What happens to, I had these kids like, you know, feeling bad. I had one of them crying, I didn't mean to make it. <laughs> 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 so this, this turtle that had a, had a piece of plastic up his nose, and it was awful. I felt bad for the turtle, but it happens. You can't litter. You can't do it. So I was like, you know what? Eighth grade? Because it was eighth grade. Because no one else is allowed to be on a trail. Um, and also, yeah, and after I said that, I was like, and this is what I found. This is what Haley found on the trail. And I shook it out, and it was all over the place. I couldn't believe how much there was. So we went, since I cleaned up the whole trail, we didn't have to worry about that, but we just went all over the other parts of the school and just picked up, and just picked up, or picked up trash. And that's how much we got. Just of just wrappers and just little stuff. About 25 pounds, I, I felt, it felt like. It's pretty happy, but I hope they learned something. I haven't seen as much trash. You're gonna have a special head population in your school. Um, don't be intimidated by that. Embrace it. Um, it's actually pretty cool. It's my boy here. He's, he has he has downs. He, uh, um, he has some other complications. His, I feel like his joints just he just doesn't bend well. I don't think he's, it hurts him so bad. It just He's unsure of different um, surfaces, like he won't go from sidewalk to grass. Um, so this is an incredible accomplishment, getting him off the bench and walk about four laps around while everyone else is doing something or playing a game. And, and it's, uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the day. But I gotta hold his hand, he won't do it by himself. another one of those things that has been cool about this fall. So when we go outside, we're, I, got, I got kids <coughs> building a course, the disc golf course. I got, I got hikers and bikers. And uh, usually have a, a football game going on. These girls were teaching one of those kids how to ride a bike. Didn't ask me to. Didn't say a thing. I was, I'm usually with the disc golf. Teaching it, and he learned how to ride a bike. He learned how to ride a bike, and he's uh, he got happy. I mean, he's a happy guy. That, that made his day. It made his day. Again, I, like I snuck up on him. I was coming up over the ridge, and I was like, "What are they doing?" I can't believe it. Here he is riding. I didn't think I'd, I didn't know if he was even capable. I was absolutely wrong. I did it. You might have an after-school program. I don't know. It depends on. There's all kinds of grants to do these kinds of things. Um, we had a uh, we had after school. We had archery, um, had gladiator training. It was kind of like just just push and pull to 
to heavy metal um, and Zumba, gardening, all that kind of stuff. I did the archery uh, mainly. Um, you could definitely have an archery uh, program at your school. You got to get certified. You see what that. Got to be certified. It takes about two days to do that. Um, it's a lot of fun, though. It's, it's, it's no big deal, but it's uh, you know it is a dangerous weapon. You should need to be certified with it. I think every school that does it has the same uh, Matthews, Genesis bows and arrows and targets and everything, just to keep it standardized so that they can have virtual tournaments and and things like that. Just about anyone can can. Can use those bows. They, they pull. Huh? Can you pass around? Oh yeah. They pull about 22 pounds, I think. Um, only the the weakest sixth graders are not going to be able to. But they're easy to shoot. Well, they're I don't, I don't say they're easy to shoot, but it teaches you how to shoot pure. No, no sights or uh, you know anything to help you out. When I got when I arrived at the Eastern Greenbrier, we did have a greenhouse. It was a fairly big greenhouse. Not as big as this room, but, but pretty big. And it was just used for a storage facility. And I was like, no, this is a greenhouse. We need to grow things in it. So we started to. We had an amazing AmeriCorps worker, Emily Leitstyle, um, came in and did an incredible job. And I was also happy that she found a home. She, she's from. Um, Minnesota and she's like this is a wonderful place and she stayed hey, you know that yeah she, she lives down there now she still lives down there um, we sold we not only used her took the food and, and, and the vegetables had it at our cafeteria we sold it at our farmers markets um, sold it to our senior citizens had a lot of food because we had the greenhouse and an outdoor we have raised beds the herb gardens all that kind of stuff. We even had like a, a, a bean, it was like a bean snake. It was, I don't know, a bean jag, I don't know. These are some of my tomatoes. I am almost tired of eating those tomatoes. <laughs> I think we've, <laughs> we've had so many, they're so good though. Current tomatoes, try them out. And in some of my health classes, I've started to, this is, I can't take the credit for this display. This is the Wild Edibles Festival in Hillsboro, uh, West Virginia. It's in Pocahontas County. Um, it's a really cool place. They're just a kind of a, a unique uh, day to learn about what you can eat in the forest. Um, so I started telling my health classes, especially about dandelions. Every once in a while, we'll eat dandelions at home. Um, Haley will pick some burdock greens and and things like that. She knows she knows what the what you can eat and what you can, and we just make greens or a salad out of them. But it's just it's a cool thing if you are in that kind of an area, which we are, that you can make a, a very colorful salad with things that are in your backyard, literally in your backyard. All the stuff you we could get on in the summertime. In the summertime. Another cross-curricular thing, uh, the art classes made garden gnomes for our outdoor uh, garden. Um, this was my favorite one, and I can't find it. I'm supposed to steal it. We'll need to do it. This is a really nice one, though. I like the hat. And you know what? Every once in a while, you can't just take a mental health day, but you, you might have to take a mental health day at school. You can play some game ball. It's, it's nothing wrong with some game ball. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Mr. Or Dr. James, this is why. This is four corner kickball. If you don't know this game, I'm going to teach it to you, and you're going to love it, and kids will too. They run so much in this game. It's better than regular kickball. They don't realize it, but some of them are going to run for, they might go around the gym 20 times in a half hour, they really will. Um, it's like, I'm just, what I'm getting to, sometimes you're gonna have a sub and they need a go-to game that the kids know. So, uh, and uh, that's one of my favorites to give them when I, when I have to be out. Although they're riding bikes in Washington today. That's what they're doing. But uh, that's it, guys, it was, it was a 
a really cool thing for me to get to, to show you what I do. Um, do we want to do some, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to. We can check out some of these, uh, these are other things that I haven't even talked about yet. Yeah, you want to maybe show us to get a couple people on the Yeah, somebody needs to come up that, somebody, somebody needs to come up that doesn't know how to do it. Or, that's what Neil said he wants to get on one. Um, <laughs> oh, with him. And some of you younger guys, come on down here a little bit. Come check this out. Oh, these are oh, Come on, let's just pass this. We have uh, uh, right. we have some bad stuff. Do I have elementary? Is there elementary here? Yeah. Um, the slack line, I have a bunch of slack racks, and I caught it is a good thing. We have a we have a slack line at home. If you have it depends on your on your campus. If you have uh, a lot of trees that you connect these these guys to, this is a, a pretty cool little balance uh, activity. There's these racks that are so heavy. They're so heavy. Now when I'm teaching this, and I'm not very good at it, but I want him. <laughs> I want him first, I want him to not look down, I want him to look like it is you, alright? All right. And I want your elbows above your shoulders. And you're going to find the eyes that way. There you go. You should do better. You should do better that way. Kinds of them. I like I like these after I started looking at them. There's a lot of uh, traction on the front or on the top. And it's got a little lip here, so you, it's not going to fly off. But I don't know. I can do it. Unless somebody else wants. Yes. Come on, Mark, get up there. Yes, you do. I know you want to. <laughs> Have you ever done this before? All right. Listen. This is this is something that looks. When I show it to the kids, they're like, oh, I, I, I <laughs> is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but he's going to. And what I want to say, um, put your feet as far out as you can on both sides. they got to be even. All right? And this is always a, this is a partner activity first. So I'm going to use, you're going to use my wrist, OK? Now, I don't want you to, like, to skew. I just want to put as much. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is all over the body. Okay? This isn't too bad. He's doing actually really good. Whoa, whoa. You don't. You don't get yeah. 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 okay. yeah. Just jump off. It doesn't take long for these kids that they, they wouldn't think that they could do it. But they find out that they can actually pretty quickly. And it gives them, it's one of those things that they're like, hey, I'm going to tell them all about this. It gives them a lot of confidence. Um, we'll do this for a couple of days. <laughs> hey, bro. We'll do it for a couple of days. And and by the, by the day two, they're flipping around. They're doing tricks up. And then we'll have it. We'll have a, uh, a talent show. After they practice a little bit, they might try to shoot a three-pointer or a foul shot um, while they're balancing. Um, they might try to put a ball on their finger. Well, that's what I usually do. But um, they'll do flips, not flips, but they'll do that. I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> but uh, they, they do a lot of cool tricks. And they, 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 some of them, it's one of those things where the, the kids that don't like um, ball sports so much, they like this. They like this. And of all the stuff that we got, these are, they love these, these skateboards. These skateboards um, from Skate Pass have, I guess, a softer wheel. I don't know much about skateboards. I, I got them. Um, they have softer wheel, and you can, and they're made to be on a, on a gym floor. They don't, they, they don't store the gym floor at all. The board will, if 
they do that. But the, the wheels themselves will not. And these are called land paddles that go with the skateboard. Has anyone ever heard these before? Um, this is a, I guess, a Hawaiian and like West Coast kind of thing. But guys will, will uh, kind of get, get around um, with a long board and just and do this, you know, like they're like they're paddle boarding or something like that. I guess it's just a, a mode of transportation. But we saw these at a conference and I was like, yep, just get these. Um, no. <laughs> I mean I can't. <laughs> I cannot believe, I mean, I thought that the kids, that it'd take a while for everybody to, oh, it's not, doesn't work too well on the, on the, on the carpet, but how many of them know how to skate? All of them do. I mean, they, they learn like so quick. Two, two days, man. And if I say get the skateboards out, they're gone. They're 25 of them. They love them. Do you guys have questions? Yeah. What you got, Bob? How do you come up with the majority of funding for all your equipment? Well, um, one thing I do want you to do, or what I would suggest when you when you start interviewing, maybe is see if find out if that county has a levy, has a county levy. Um, that that money is is a tax with the, the county the taxpayers that goes to you as funding for your program. No, you know, this grant is a once in a lifetime thing um, that I appreciate over every day. And we do, and, and luckily Greenbrier County also has a, a really nice levy. I get uh, a good bit of money to replenish, repair, and, and restore everything uh, from year to year. A lot of counties don't have it, though. and it's uh, I don't I don't know I don't know how, how it works. You have built some really neat partnerships with businesses in the community, um, or at least to facilitate some of the partnerships. Well, not money necessarily, but expertise. It's certainly, and I'm sure there's plenty of other communities. Our community is a very outdoor adventure kind of just cool people town <laughs> and it's so easy to get as much help as you need with anything but you gotta yeah you gotta really embrace your community and, and get out there and make sure if you go to a new new town or something that people know who you are because i think if they do know there's people want to help you i mean we get spot you know and you can get sponsors for different things you know you just gotta be creative. I'm not as creative about it because I haven't had to as much yet. But um, yeah, if I didn't have that levy, it would be it would be tough. But I know that you know <laughs> some of my teacher friends. They, do you remember Tank uh, Scarborough, especially? I always think about him. He like get a, he'd get like a junk car and just it'd be like all right five dollars you swing at it as many times as you want you know and, and just and make three hundred dollars from smashing a car or something like that and, you know just just crazy stuff he, he would come up with with things like that at home so you just gotta be creative if you can't get any other way the questions what you got with? with the bows do you have a lot of maintenance issues with the bows like for like say a student dry fires a bow yeah yeah that was the biggest thing and i started out with 17. i think i've only lost four mm -hmm. from that dry firing, yeah. just from just from absolute ignorance about it i wasn't mad at them they didn't know um they're actually they're pretty they're pretty dependable mm -hmm. um there's just uh, we uh, I have I have all of them. I think at some point I'll just take you know like a half dozen and take them to our local archery shop and be like, can you fix them? Or if you can, you can. If you can, awesome. Yeah, they look really sturdy. I didn't expect them to be so sturdy. So yeah, they're, seen a they're fun to shoot. Education class. They're really fun to shoot, and the once you get trained, the the 
just the, the cadence, the protocol that you have to do to to shoot. It's it's I think it's the I don't forget what they said. It's one of the safest actually. It has to be the safest sport where we'd have a lot of issues, I guess, yeah. but uh, it's that uh, yeah, just the way everybody has to do it and just you know the the instructions and everything is actually very safe. Other than the other than the original um, organizational issues you would have with kids, uh, don't point your weapons at other people when you have them pulled back. Right. Make sure. sure. But other than that, I would see that I would, there probably isn't many injuries with, with archery itself, I would assume. Yeah, just as quickly as possible. Like, okay. everybody has to, like, there's one line that everybody that's not shooting mm -hmm. has to be behind, and it's like yeah. five feet behind the actual shooting line that everyone's here and they can't pick up an arrow until I give the whistle blast to say, all right, you guys can shoot and they have to shoot, they have to point it down. And yeah, it's it's there was only there was, there's only been one time that, that one little you know, one little girl like ran in, she's like, I gotta get this sign, you know. Right. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> she, she was fine. Did you have one, Brad? I'm sorry, Derek. Uh, I was just wondering what kind of arrows that you used and like how you would progress those. Plus um, the they're a standard. I know they're from Easton. Uh, they're also standard across different schools and everything. And there's uh, there, um, what, what is the archery in schools is the is where you would find the, the information. For okay. The program is I think. Seven hundred dollars for like for a decent package, and I think they're they're very uh, as long as they have a number of people that would want to be certified in your community, they'd be happy to come come there. If you be, in, I mean, it doesn't matter not in West Virginia, but all around. I want to say one more thing. If you did, and I, I forgot in the thing about tennis, Kyle. Hoffman is an unbelievable uh, promotion promoter of tennis. Um, he is the Fairmont State head coach, men's coach, and is also director of programming in the Mid Atlantic region. I think he will. He want to do some tennis. He'd be like, "What you want? I'll get it." Well, Chris is going to be around. Just one more time. Let's thank you.